this is about performance hacks that really works in the context of competitive exams sir i am a marathon runner will this performance hack work okay uh, so we are uh, discussing in terms of competitive exams so most of the things that we discuss applies to competitive exams it's not necessarily specific to gate or gate biomedical engineering competitive exams in general in fact uh, i'm going to discuss novel things sir there are hundreds of videos in youtube about this topic right given that i'm going to discuss novel things and uh, we also want to restrict to approaches that work hey there is a hack okay but does it work for the competitive exam of my interest right so it works in a memory competition international memory competition but does it work for my exam that's a different question right so approaches that work approaches that are practic practical hey there is a way to memorize million digits of pi what is that practical right can i apply that again for proving my performance in the competitive exam and also at the end of this hey you don't want to be a passive one sided podcast or a lecture you want to make it rather interactive somewhat memorable as much as possible with some strong takeaway points so there are going to be actionable items and most of those actionable items i am sure by the end of this uh, you know session you will see hey if i have cycle of thought about it you know you stick with this some of the suggestions and creative ideas that we discuss will certainly leave a smile and you will have some actionable takeaways so it's going to be long but you know i have condensed the information in many many videos with all the constraints that i have listed here so the length kind of is justified by the amount of information and the way we discuss it okay that's one thing performance hacks in fact mostly performance hack that works for competitive exams okay you could say hacks that work or hack that works so why are you hacking sawing like this right so to set up a stage to set up a context right uh, this is official data from gate uh, committee i'm going to focus on gate biomedical data here but there are also you know many other uh, branches data from many other branches so if you look at this about 2400 students registered for the exam right those who appeared as like 1900 right about 10 20% 25 didn't actually sh- show up right 20% didn't show up so if you show up for the exam you have a actually you got a competitive edge right there just by showing up for the exam and notice out of the 1860 students who showed up those who qualified or cleared the cut off is 124 less than 10% and uh, so out of 100 i think the mean marks a top 0.1% here scored 46.33 out of 100 so compared to other branches this is relatively easy one thing that is very well known by now and the average marks scored by this you know 1900 students is close to 9.56 right well below the cut off general cut off of 25 the category does matter if it is general cut off is 25 obc ews that so this is 22.5 and uh, scst this is 16.6 most exams this is a typical pattern can i show for instrumentation i have a screenshot what i can this is just go to gate 2024 official website not 2025 website but i got the data from 2024 official website if, if you go there uh, there is some cumulative statistics on the whole gate exam there is a lot more than what i just discussed so no does at this stage you should feel good if you are certainly showing up for the exam because no does only a subset shows up 80% right of the 100% those who apply so if you show up you kind of have a lead and in reality right to this 1900 become 120 there is you know there are multiple funnels or filters where the number keeps on decreasing and end up with this qualifying mark and so on and so forth the typical funnels are just like students don't show up there are also students who don't prepare or prepare during one or two days before the examination by which they are typically panicking or starting preparation one week before the examination again by then they are typically confused as to what to prepare and all that so they don't prepare and even of the students who prepare most students don't practice practice and effective means okay so this is typically a small subset 
that give sufficient respect for the competition you know be courteous to the competition okay national level competition and we are supposed to do so and so things so that we put up a good fight okay yeah that subset is actually very very small if you ask me roughly around 300 out of the 1900 who showed up and then once you know typically if you are practicing you know preparing practicing or some things that you can do again most of you at this stage are concerned about excelling right you're not bothered about clearing the cutoff but actually you are also trying to get a seat of your choice and so on and so forth get a single digit rank you you know sometimes get an all india rank one and so on and so forth. some of you are also concerned about this okay so but whatever your status is okay there are things that you could do to improve your performance easily qualify struggling to qualify to easily qualify there are some certain things that you could do you are already doing well okay can you shine in the gate exam again there are some systematic science based evidence based uh, things that one could do and uh, the topic of this discussion is that ellipses over there there are some real performance hacks that work and what are some things that you could do kind of applies wherever you are you can improve your you can go to the next step okay you can improve your status quo you can improve the, your performance not necessarily like uh, compared to someone else wherever you stand you can improve your efficiency and your performance based on where you stand right now and those are some of the tricks that i want to discuss in this you know webinar or talk and one of the reasons to restrict to competitive exams specifically gate exam because exams differ from each other from the things that they test abilities that they test for example neat exam the ability that is primarily being tested is the ability to recall right primarily being tested i am not saying that it's they are only going to test that primarily can you some recall some details in human anatomy and physiology that is a question of interest but there are also competitive exams get is very illustrative specifically for engineers where they don't stop at testing you with the ability to recall but also understand a subject specific concept knowledge hey, there is newton's laws of motion can you understand that can you comprehend that can you apply that right can you apply that to known situations can you apply that to new situations uncertain ambiguous situations right close to real world situations so interestingly gate is a hard exam this is also similar in case you know in case of je and all that the ability is being tested is not just recall it also make sure that uh, ability to comprehend subject knowledge apply subject knowledge analyze and synthesize subject knowledge they are also being tested okay so some of the tricks that we discuss applies to all four of these aspects okay typically performance hacks there is a memory trick they are targeting recall okay but what we want to discuss is things that work for most of these abilities having said that if you are not able to recall a law or a formula your ability to comprehend apply or synthesize is lost okay so there will be again even in this discussion special significance will be given to the ability to recall okay that's one thing and what is the real problem okay so recall is a central ability upon which rest of this ability is hinge right if only i could uh, recall that formula right i can apply that and so on right if only i could recall that particular integral whatever it is right i could do that uh, integration by parts whatever it is so typically recall is necessary execute some of these abilities okay and uh, your real villain real recall is this and we had a discussion on this exponential curves right memory typically you learn something okay this is a measure of y axis is a measure of your memory your ability to recall let's say x axis is time typically like even you could say these are days okay what happens is there is decay of that memory day scale or week scale but typically whatever you learn today tomorrow you don't remember all of that whatever you, you know learn at the end of this discussion most of it doesn't uh, stay in your mind uh, two hours after that right real villain is this retention curve or learning curve right what you learn kind of degrades with time 
this is your real villain and the primary ability is this recall bring out a registered information in your memory and that memory that ability is getting degraded over time it is very natural okay one should only be surprised if this memory is like uh, increasing over time right what you learned it kind of increases over time but unless you put unless there is a role of life right unless there is a role of intelligence typically memory degrades over time this is your real villain okay so having said that now let's me also you know make start making this a discussion what are some memory tricks and performance hacks that you know most of you already know memory tricks so most of the videos only repeat those tricks i want to know where you stand what are the typical memory tricks and performance hacks that you use okay we'll make this anonymous go to menti.com okay started getting responses right most of you are using tricks typically you know what's your favorite performance hack okay typically a memory trick okay but performance preparation preparation hack so 137 learn on first day revise on third again on okay 137 learn this is first day learn on first day revise on third again or revise on third again revise on seventh use flash cards i hope i read that correct right 137 learn so 137 learn on first day revise on third revise again on seventh use flash cards i hope i read that response correctly and then flash cards are explaining to others so most of you are entering flash cards that is good explaining to others i suppose you are referring to the feynman technique right you learn better by explaining something to students so this is why i suggest students to have a conversation in the you know whatsapp group chat where you benefit by both asking and answering a question ask a question you get your doubt clarified someone answers right they learn because they are explaining to someone else that's a, you know referred to as the feynman technique it great making mnemonics which are mostly relatable or which are funnier in some way so making mnemonics which are mostly relatable or which are funnier in some way so now this is you are using memory aids there are many memory aids mnemonics that are somewhat relatable and you know we tend to have a bias towards remembering or recalling absurd things when you are emotionally aroused we tend to remember things better right absurd events we tend to remember better so to kind of make that absurd or funnier in some way okay so you one of you use mnemonics that are also relatable can i substitute relatable with more associative approachable or associative something that you already know or that you have a strong emotional or a conceptual association with try to translate and understand in my mother tongue actually this is a very interesting moment actually your mental activity drastically changes by changing the language that you use if you ask me to critically think in my mother tongue unfortunately it's very you know rusty because i develop my critical thinking in english it's hard for me to think that way in my mother tongue for me that is the case but you know for uh, those of you have some of these skills better tuned in mother tongue if you translate that understand it again you make it more relatable or approachable okay fair point okay i'll have to come back to this key notes stuck up on the wall which i tend to see every now and then okay now this is okay one is to use flash cards another one is to use sticky notes at this point let me say both are not one and the same there is a very 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 crucial difference between using sticky notes and using flash cards what is the difference in fact uh, that difference is so crucial i have a preference towards flash cards sticky notes okay you are looking at it often you know by deliberately or uh, accidentally you are looking at the sticky notes okay you are uh, trying to refresh your memory right but memory doesn't enhance best that way memory retains or enhances best you try to recall uh information so if you have a pointer or a trigger in one side of a flash card if you try to recall what is there in the other side of a flash card okay and then after trying to recall this is what i am going to state as active recall right after trying to recall you see whether you know you how much of that you recalled and how much of that you didn't recall right you complete that picture by looking at the back back side of the card right so flash cards involve active recall while sticky notes is mostly passive and typically accidental staring right so flash cards are preferred
okay we'll come back to this so understand concept and memorize one is okay you are saying that yeah at the end of the day you also need to know apply that right uh, apply comprehend analyze synthesis and all that so understanding not just a matter of recall but i also want to give a better structure to that memory okay let's call that understand that concept imagination okay so some of the other things that i am seeing here is imagination i am going to again club that with visual information the bandwidth and the amount of things involved is brain activity involved is of magnitude higher compared to this auditory information for that reason okay and few others visualizing things is known to help with memory better and typically visualization you know you club it with some of the other things that we were discussing at you could do active recall visualization you could do associative visualization right and all that okay learning the concept and applying it in problems to understand it and keeping keep in memory for long so okay fine learning the concept see it turns out that if you just understand the concept right that alone doesn't help with retention of your memory you need to actively work towards retaining your memory and this could happen in fact what they have seen us this has been done many many ways any permutation combination you can think of typically it has been tested okay typically okay you study 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 and then do a test that doesn't work performance doesn't improve as much as you do study test 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 and then you do a final test it's it also so happens that you study test later you do general aptitude somewhere in april you revise general aptitude and test for general aptitude somewhere in you know december that is really really ineffective you study some concept in general aptitude today the more immediately you test it the better it works okay so you did a lecture today as soon as the lecture gets over you try to recall what happened in the lecture that is known to be more effective okay so this testing spaced repetitive testing immediate testing in fact typically even uh, the more difficult uh, the test material is better is your performance in the actual exam okay these are some of the studies that are uh, well known and kind of already made testing involves active recall there are many things involved in you know while you take a test but when you try to answer a question you are always trying to bring out uh, details from your memory you are trying to recall details from your memory and this specific aspect the ability to recall actively recall or complete a piece of information you have partial trigger you want to complete it right and perhaps follow it up with quick immediate feedback hey whether what i completed is correct or not that is known to work really 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 well that is one thing that can really retain your memory in fact that is something that can really boost your memory okay so and some of the other things we have learning the concept and uh, okay once you have this now there are other things right uh, how do i improve my ability in application and all that that's a very you know how do i apply a concept how do i improve my performance in applying a concept how do i improve my performance in in comprehending a concept or you know even synthesizing uh, a solution for a given problem these in a way are secondary to the ability to recall right so let's for the time being let's put focus on that recall let's also look at other things that i have highlighting the main points by using different colors so by highlighting the main points uh, again this is uh, students typically do this and this is you know one of the reasons i am doing this is this is anonymous right a quick feedback highlighting seems like a very very productive activity hey i am doing some work see how much coloring i have done right kind of boosts uh, this confidence in the short term but over the long term does it really improve your memory okay you are kind of doing some emotional arousal with all the colors and all that but still in the long time highlighting and all that note taking and all that is not known to be effective at least compared to active recall that is hey you have all this highlighted sticky notes right staring at it every now and then that is not as effective as however highlighted it is right however active pictorial visualized observed it is it is not as effective as actively recalling what is at the back of a flash card testing an immediate feedback that is the key thing that really improves your memory that is the only thing that works
or that works better than most of the things that uh, that are mentioned here okay this 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 has been empirically known in different different scenarios different different contexts so to recall my suggestion would be that okay highlight okay you like this colors kind of colors also kind of briefly helps you relax and improve your uh, you know mood and all that fine do that but i'm not saying you know you should give up highlighting but active recall say during testing or just using a flash card and trying to complete the picture at the back of a flash card that is the most effective thing as far as preparing for a competitive exam course this has the most effect on your ability to recall which is fundamental to other abilities that are being tested often early morning go through of the content or recalling the particular moment ask the questions and my thought process during the that instance of time okay now this final this common that i have so i am you know if there are any more comments uh, i'm still waiting for comments but this is bringing out another interesting detail right does the time of this performance right what are you doing does it matter nearly morning go through of the content or recalling the particular moment we ask the questions so i suppose you are referring to me right uh, how we introduced a concept and uh, did all that my thought process during that instance of time helps okay fine okay this is good but again what we know from lots of studies we have done we have done as in like the scientific community that has done i'll give you as many articles as possible links to as many articles as possible but truxus your mind is most creative and most active in the morning typically around 4 am okay and at that time that is a time that when i typically want to do the most uh, creative thing that i want to do example if i am trying to structure or organize this presentation i am trying to create this presentation till i am using that day and the best time to to active recall is actually just before you go to sleep because whatever things that you are kind of processing just before you sleep your brain is biased towards storing and processing that information so if you are trying to remember something for the long term a good time to do that is just before you sleep even when your all your lights are off and all that you know that you haven't slept but you are trying to sleep or going to sleep right that is one of the times that you can best time to do active recall even if you don't need a flash card you can try to recall what you learned that day and all that one of the things that you could of course do is to imagine what happens the next day say day before the exam again it helps to visualize what happens but on a typical day if you to recall you learned during that day brain really loves storing that information before sleep okay so time matters all of this matters so language is in fact uh, uh, try to understand that in my mother tongue okay we'll we'll also address that okay okay this is good so these are the typical things so all of you know already know about mnemonics all of you know already you know already know about flash cards uh, some of you are recognizing a hey, this uh, association matters this emotional arousal matters visualization matters spaced repetition matters right uh, testing matters testing or active recall that matters and conceptual understanding rather than rote learning i suppose that matters timing matters right having said all of this right having heard all of this i already briefly commented there are things that you can do to either improve this whatever you mention you can do it in a slightly better way okay or there are things that you can do that are not mentioned here. certainly have a stick effect on your performance okay so those are the things that i am going to discuss right now this is good so we get back to that so most of you you know have a reasonable background but again i say said you know i'll certainly at the end of this talk hey i could have that's a very interesting way to flash cards right i could have thought about it or something like that right i will try to leave a smile by the end of this lecture okay at least one of the tricks that i'm going to say will leave that smile hey that is kind of out of box creative interesting right i'm going to use that right that kind of feeling is what i want to leave you with and uh, notice see conceptual clarity how do you excel in a competitive exam that you know tests some of the abilities that i mentioned conceptual clarity is a must okay so most of you are already in that thing and conceptual clarity is where uh, a teacher can play a primary role right when the way the concept is introduced and all that conceptual clarity you know a teacher has a lot of role to play here or the books or materials that you used to prepare has a lot of role to play here okay then practice matters 
gate exam your ability to deal with surprise matters your you know in a cricket your ability to deal with you know googlies uh, and bouncers and yorkers right anticipate that matter right again similar to that gate exam always comes up with surprises questions your ability to deal with that matters and okay there is a matter of luck okay what happens in the your health on that examination day whether you had a stomach upset on the examination day and all that right silly things there is a matter of luck involved okay but uh, given that uh, you are you have done your homework that is your foundations are covered conceptual clarity practice basic practice ability to deal with surprise you know some luck basic health and all that is covered you can certainly get a competitive edge okay. so the problem is this is decaying memory decays with time this is kind of universal right unless you do something active about it unless life intervenes or intelligence intervenes it's going to drop you could say this is you know this is second law of thermodynamics right there is a structure in neurons and then that tends to decay over time unless special intelligence you know things far away from equilibrium something interesting happens right so this is what happens now if you look at it how can we affect this decay curve yes. the starting information this be affected i'm going to discuss how this qualitatively okay even the speaker is qualitative the rate of decay can that be affected let's say two things rate of decay can you affect that can you affect initial amplitude is yes. someone learned initially their memory is so much someone another student their ability to recall is actually very very high you could think of this as you know your, the percentage of uh, correct answers in a simple test right the student is able to answer 9 out of 10 questions the student is able to answer 7 out of 10 questions soon after reading the material so in that way the initial amplitude also matters so question 1 you change this initial amplitude question 2 how do you do you make this curve decay slower okay in fact you already said many of these things right here how you learn something matters okay? immediate testing even before you learn something so that's the most immediate you know it can be right and after you learn that's immediate how about you test it even before you learn no it is before i gave you all the topics right i was asking you all this because it is known that immediate testing in fact if you test it even before the lectures if you start thinking about hey how is this concept even related to that concept when you read a question right how does it even make sense right that actually has an effect on how you learn okay immediate testing so i am going to club that with active recall it also you know some of these are from the teaching side right so visualization so you know emotions matter emotional arousal and all that matter and uh, closely associated with this is interleaving so we are having a conversation on memory suddenly you know let's say teacher is wondering hey how about uh, is this dk also happening you know happening in pets right talking about competitive examinations let's think of a scenario you're trying to train a pet right does some of the things that we discuss apply for those pets notice there are teachers who uh, in fact uh, typically good teachers keep digressing from what appears to be the task at hand subject or concept at hand it so happens that all the jokes digress- digressions history facts anecdotes and all that known to improve how how much you initially store that thing it also turns out association learning if you relate something a new idea to a idea that you are well aware of okay that matters so you kind of so most of you mentioned that you try to make it relatable and approachable but also be aware of this state of your mind in simple terms at least you, you know now you are all biomedical students right the neural oscillations or the uh, you know predominant frequencies in your eeg alpha D, you know alpha wave delta wave gamma wave and all that right It also seem to matter that is while you are learning something okay again you are already know that some of these waves are functionally correlated to uh, or better correlated to uh, different states of mind okay one wave corresponds to attention one other wave corresponds to relaxing and all that right so state of your mind matters while you are registering something that means many of the things that we take for granted most of you are seated well right or sitting in a chair or something like that preferably like the way you would be sitting in your examination hall it so happens that 
if you are lying down right with a stand for your mobile phone or something like that and listening to this lecture unfortunately right when you are trying to recall say during an examination your posture is different associated to that is your brain state typically okay there is a slight change but sufficient uh, uh, change to hinder with your ability to recall even things like the pen that you use whether you took a bath or not right the uh, perfume that you are that you are wearing many of these things are emotionally associated consciously unconsciously you are not deliberately aware of it but unfortunately a part of your brain is registering that if you don't replicate that it so happens that your ability to recall that in recall information also seems to be attenuated that is seems to be bad so beware of all those things so if your grandma is saying like hey don't uh, watch do something while you are eating or right or don't uh, lie down and listen to a lecture you know how you associate you know how you uh, register something in your brain and how you try to recall it unfortunately could be could end up in two different scenarios and that that is known to have an effect okay be aware of that one is it's good to associate with already known things that is one thing but be careful about your environment be careful about things the senses and things around you that you may not be really aware of okay that is one thing okay associate you okay these are some of the things that matter here now is there a way to slow down this dk let's say you registered this you did all the right things or whatever it is you know compared to yesterday you did well today okay kind of associated this say you boosted your performance to one okay now the question is between fast decay and slow decay how do you change this so notice here in your long term emotional arousal emotional arousal you know in in other terms let's say physiological stress physiological stress ability to you know memorize focus concentrate and all that right there are many many things right so there are things you could do to slow down the decay natural decay that is happening we talk we had a conversation on this right simple regular breathing exercises regular surya namaskar and regular stretching moderate exercise sports play whatever it is whatever keeps you active right regularly these are things that can have effect on the rate of decay so efficient your neurons on the neural circuit is retaining that information can be controlled using some of these things we had a conversation on that but in fact if needed we will also have a separate conversation on this on on the effects of you know the rate of decay but at this stage a simple way to change this rate of decay yes you learn something you close the book you forget about it memory keeps on dropping a simple 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 intervention here here right is to relearn it again restudy it again that you know hold on for a time being right yeah one of the simple things that you could do okay i know i'm going to forget whatever is the rate of decay whatever is this initial thing whatever is the rate of decay anyone okay irrespective of your initial amplitude and your rate of decay you can try to refresh your memory and this is what many of you mentioned uh, 137 learning flash count this and all that this is where many of this some of the tricks that you mentioned you know shows up notice i say this arrow i already mentioned it but notice if you were doing study again and refresh your memory if you do test active recall testing involves recalling trying to recall you know recalling information from your memory right you are executing this retrieval process active recall this is known to work this is not known to work at least as efficiently as this seems to happen as in fact if you actively recall the first time notice typically again this is qualitatively shown but the dk rates also seem to be affected you recall it you know immediately a couple of times your long term memory seems to be better because your dk rate seems to drop your long term memory seems to increase okay and some of the things that really matter here okay or active recall this is like filling up partial information i need to be specific about that definition okay filling up partial you do the, you know if you are taking a test you do you do this by default filling up partial information and quickly verifying that okay and immediate verification this feedback immediate feedback this is known to work best and here some of the things words and matters immediacy matters after learning the faster you 
you know the sooner you try to do active recall the better it is and sp- spaced repetition by like exercising a muscle you can exercise your your active recall ability that improves over time this matters okay and in fact studying again in fact to really highlight the study again you know anything like even sticky notes or highlight sticky notes doesn't work as much as sticky notes highlighting and all that as far as this process is concerned doesn't work as effective as a flash card which is the reason you know whole of medical school is kind of relies on flash card unfortunately the culture of using flash cards is not that common in terms of you know in in the engineering community but medical community uh, recall is a primary ability so flash cards are kind of ubiquitously used right quick thing okay mnemonics so most of you know know some some of the mnemonic or the other we also discuss lots of mnemonics in the class perhaps we'll i'll give one or two illustrative examples associate ability to associate it with a memory with a visual absurdity whatever it is typically associate with uh, with a sense or something like that it it's known to work associate even at least associate with a known concept right so you can uh, you know group things you know try to tell your phone number one digit at a time it's harder to say it compared to saying it three at a time or four at a time right so that also extends to not just digits in your phone number but also to concepts and all that if there are 10 concepts say for example in properties of fourier transform if you kind of group them right it's much easier to remember rather than the 10 single concepts using analogies again closely related to association okay notice i use extensive use of analogies in class emotional ar- arousal digressions jokes and all that absurd visualizations all of this is known to work and if you are in a know if memory is the competition right typically this happens in uh, you know memory competitions and all that there are other techniques right there are mind balance peg locate techniques and all that okay uh, but this is not typically useful for uh, you know million digits but is it uh, useful for uh, remembering all the equations to simplify this i would say if recall is the only thing being tested this is actually very useful given that apply synthesis and all that is being tested is not all that useful okay apply comprehend and uh, synthesis analyze synthesis right it's what real competitive exams are uh, test right so this doesn't work here if it's 100% recall perhaps there are some exclusive memory techniques you also need will it work for everyone is it practical right you need specialized training or are you willing to do that and all that that's a very different question so now we already have uh, we are finding difficult to find time for gate preparation there is end semester exam there is placements going on i already have a job right given all that is it also practical i would say this is not practical okay i would say we want to stick to things that are practical right okay having said this that matter i already discussed of the things and what i initially promised us i said some of the constraints what i want to discuss let's say needs to be novel approaches that work hey there is this mind palace technique will it work for the gate exam do i have time to train for that mind palace technique right it's a different question the approaches that work again needs to be practical also actionable let me say i'm going to prescribe flash cards but in ways in that in which you know in ways in which that you typically don't use it or never thought of using flash cards in that way at least one or two ways that i i'm going to show you will fall into that category so there is this full aspect you know, if there isn't any novelty i don't see any point of doing this one thing that really matters active recall flash cards uh, what you should be doing is this my suggestion is digital flash cards you typically have your phone in your hand right flash cards in addition to active recall notice you can use there is an app called anki right if it's an app in your phone any wasted minutes here and there during travel right while waiting for something and all that you can save minutes at a time that can you know over a course of a day that can become hours right you save 60 minutes here and there 60 moments minutes while waiting while traveling right while sitting so there is this added benefit of time management added to flash cards not just active recall from that perspective okay and uh, let me show you how to use that flash card example to open up couple of things okay I'll just give me a few seconds so the idea of a flash card right in one side you have a what is the integral of this let's say indefinite integral of this other side you have this notice this is different from a sticky note 
you don't have both the pieces in the same side when you look at the front side idea is to complete this integral to actively recall that in integral to bring it out from your memory once you do that you verify whether things are correct by looking at the back of the card or you are not able to recall okay look at the back of the card for the first time right so this is different from using a sticky note highlighting on it so active recall is involved in the using you know looking at the front side of the card guessing or you know completing the back side of the call involves active recall which really works okay so a simple example of a flash card front side back side I've shown as an integral could be many other things right and uh, let me also show you one second this change one of the commons that i am getting us there is another app called zorbi where we can directly upload our material and it would create flashcards for us hey so there is this manual process of creating flashcards okay can that be automated hey i'll put in this book automatically can i get a output is a, you know n number of flashcards n varying from you know 100 thousand to 10 thousand right uh, yes yeah there, there are apps there are in fact many many apps like that there are you know codes python codes and many things like that you can even retrieve information from wikipedia google and all that concatenate and all that yeah my one question is sometimes the act of preparing a flash card fun helps with this initial memory boost what your what your starting amplitude is can be can be impacted by in the process of creating a memory card for that reason there are automatic tools and all that i prefer creating my own cards okay, for that reason okay but there are apps yeah well again you can be somewhat intelligent about smart about how you you efficient about how you do flash cards that's also my major point here right novelty comes in how efficiently you use the flash cards so whether a automatic software would bring you that level of efficiency is you know another question okay but good there are certainly other apps okay uh worth exploring i showed you an example of a flash card what do you typically make in a flash card Pro let me probe that question further let's say there is this xyz or app a to z that creates flash cards for you what are some of the features that you would want what kind of flash cards do you want it to have right it gives you like a uh, thousand integrals this integral uh, front side back side integral on t is the right one app makes thousands of such integrals or you know do you prefer an app that slightly for example hey most of these integrals are trivial straightforward right you can derive one from the, from this one integral you can derive most of this we know this polynomial if we know this exponential most of it is done right what is really tricky is this one particular integral or three particular integrals i would rather put that in the sense what are some design elements in your ideal flash card see one of the things is in fact notice we looked at a flash card example right that lonty example and i said this is the whole thing boils down to active recall filling a partial information right that is what has a real effect on your memory so which information which partial information should i fill write a paragraph right use only key points for theory recall is one thing great notice you can use anki in novel ways you know any flash card not even regular flash card in novel ways anki is open source okay don't make money uh, you are not going to lose money which is one reason i am preferring that uh, see one of the things is uh, i am not selling snake oil i am not selling right you know uh, this pill that pill you know pillow bed cover none of that okay or even this cancer drug or whatever it is right so i am not selling any of that for that reason i do have a preference towards anki which is open source okay but there are different times but can you put any flash card even a physical flash card or a digital flash card can you use that in novel ways notice they typically address this right recall but can you also use flash cards to actually help you with some of these abilities being tested most of the in fact novelty discuss shows up in applying flash cards towards some of these aspects i'll give you a very very simple example of what i mean by using a flash card and in novel ways many of you make has this issue with units if you make this unit conversion there is a silly mistake problem right how about having value acceleration due to gravity on one part of the one side of a card derive that value in a different unit that unit isn't there in the other side of the card 
perhaps some of the conversions unit conversions that you also need are also written there so you're not just trying to you know the completion of information you are doing it's not just mental you are also using a pen and paper you are weak in unit conversion i have a flashcard with uh, this value in two sides my objective is to look at the front side and to guess what the units number will be for the for the different units one is in let's say acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meter per second square what is that in feet per uh, you know feet per second square right so this active recall partial completion of information doesn't have to do with a textual detail or a symbolic detail and it need not necessarily just happen in your mind you can use a tool pen and paper in the process of converting you know guessing what is there in the black side you can you can design flashcards for that right but this is why i said preferably i like making my own flashcards because the typical app that automates this flashcard process doesn't personalize the flashcards right the only person who could personalize that is yourself okay which is in fact one of the reasons i'm also not going to uh, sell you flashcards or share you my flashcards i feel they work best if you prepare the flashcards and you need to prepare for the abilities obviously for the abilities that you are being tested for the abilities that you are trying to improve right you can do that partial completion here right one is in liters per minute i have value say 5.5 liters per minute cardiac output this is the front side of the card okay t meter cube per second you do this calculation i fill this missing piece of information the cube per second you do this once of course this number is kind of you know kind of there to verify you know and the point is hey sir i am using you know i know students who go to this uh, eye testing and uh, the first time they went they were reading the letters the second time they went their memory was so good they were not their eyes were really bad they couldn't see the letters but they were uh, recalling information from their memory i had friends like that right so point is not to actually just recall this number but actually to do this calculation point is to exercise active recall point is to partially you know point is to complete missing information not just in the mind everything in the mind use a you know pen and paper tool pen and paper but this is specifically for students who make a lot of silly mistakes unit unit missing what do i do unit conversion exercise right pen uh, pen and paper who said uh, flashcards who constrained you from using flashcards only for one word in the front and you know word or image in the back right you're trying to do us partial info complete and review complete info it need not be correct that's why you also have this quick review this is this is the ideal idea behind a flash card and this is the key detail in you know this active recall this recall doesn't have to be mental that recall can also be physical or combination of mental and physical like using a pen and paper why do i say this because many students struggle with unit conversions right this is known to improve again this is, this is actually not just a form of active recall this is a form of practice again the, the, the more you practice certainly that aspect and that muscle builds and what you are doing is actually you know you are weak in this you are deliberately designed your flash card and you are doing it with feedback review so this deliberate practice certainly known to work and you don't need a additional teacher perhaps while preparing the file you are weak in the silly mistakes that's where you need it. right you do what is you know this is known to work very well deliberate practice of course sir how do we practice that's a very different question we need to have a conversation on that but you know this is a simple way in fact this is how about i i just try to show you one information one piece of information and this is also you know this is a typical mistake a student does typical problem a student face you can deal that with a flash card and in the process you can address some of these abilities improve some of these abilities not just the recall comprehension application analysis synthesis i'll give you a couple of more examples couple of you know very different examples not just this uh, unit conversion right but rather uh, drastically very different abilities or even very drastically different scenarios uh, novel use of flashcards this some of you already pointed out i have decided to make a flashcard right i won't make it really elaborate and all that i wouldn't you know one side i wouldn't put front side of the card so i'm sorry front side of the card i would put you know eeg neural oscillation back side of the card i would put you know delta wave theta wave alpha wave, uh, you know in fact let's say i kind of somewhat prune the information beta wave gamma wave right this is the typical front and back notice you don't have to no one constrains you in doing this 
this front and back combination is at your disposal at is at your imagination and creation example my version of back would be this i think we spoke about this in class right roughly 3.5 and it keeps doubling right 3 into 2 into 2 into 2 right so greater than 30 is gamma then uh, till 3.5 it's delta then uh, 3.5 to 7 is theta alpha notice this is my back so i, I combine a mnemonic and a flash, right so mnemonic flashcard many of you actually were, were very close I, I would avoid paras but my point is right get straight to the mnemonic hey, if, I, if I just know this right uh, eeg neural oscillations hey d tap g then 3.5 doubles in fact notice i would also put most of this in double you know in gray because once you know 3.5 i double it every time right and that 3.5 is approximately you know you, you got the range you know and this range is not really you know it's not a, there, there is no clear boundary there it's like a, more of a guideline typically delta waves in this range till you know around the three to four is where we some of the functionalities associated with delta wave stop right so 3.5 is a for in my purpose it's easier to remember right notice i know this exact number is immaterial but this range is important first comes delta 3.5 theta wave is 4 to 7 right that is very important next comes theta around like uh you know three uh, around the three hertz from 4 to 7 bandwidth that is theta that is very important that is what i have encoded here or that mnemonic is what i have used as a flashcard it's more efficient than let's say this back one this is back one this is back two and most of you get this idea because aligns with your efficient flashcard theory key points key theory but how do we find how do we come up with mnemonics hey this is good d tab g right whether you put uh, you know dumbbell transform albert brownie whatever it is right whatever you put here right to remember this for me d tab g i can easily remember that right and 3.5 doubles right that also i can easily remember so i came up with this mnemonic and i also i showed you i slightly modified the boundaries a three and four is not convenient 3.5 notice the moment i have 3.5 i kind of scored every other number here into uh, into 3.5 into 2 is 7 into 2 is you know 15 okay uh fine so 15 14 okay 15 into 5 is 30 right i got more the range correct most mcqs i am actually correct and typically they don't uh, nats don't uh, probe you at this recall nats don't probe you at this boundary they are safe within this region okay in this range inside this range so i am i know i'm good uh, students genuinely have this concern how do you come up with mnem mnemonics at the first place if we have mnemonics one is i try to give as many mnemon mnemonics as possible we have a collection of mnemonics which keeps accumulating over time right as i repeat this uh, uh, class year after year so i give you as many mnemonics as possible but again mnemonics that are emotionally arouse you that are more personal right work better so how do you how do you come up with mnemonics suggestions or rather i should say any creative solutions here creative or any solutions for good creative okay how how should one you know i don't have a mnemonic i don't have a simple mnemonic fave movie or sport fine so this is yeah this notice this mnemonic creation is actually uh, you need a bit of training visualization you know you need, you need a bit of training for that okay so this jump involves a lot of imagination absurdity you know regularization uh, actually this is a, this is somewhat complicated okay imagination prior knowledge training already we are constrained by you know gate preparation time in that i'm going to train for preparing for mnemonics and all that right is it practical data buji yeah in fact d tab g is uh in fact uh, not a good way to remember data buji i think uh, sounds more absurd it's chances of recalling that is higher i certainly agree okay now in fact i would change uh, d tab g to data buji but data buji the only thing is uh d tab there is a a and a, a repeat repeating so but fine absurd sounds you know that uh somewhat easier to recall right data bug data bug yeah there is an ambiguity they just be aware of that okay data bug but as i said if if it sounds more absurd you learn it better okay data buji in a way is absurd okay but unfortunately or fortunately you tend to remember that better it's not just visualizations so many many of you mentioned visualization and all that right this is also a matter of emotional arousal 
in when you try to visualize absurd things you are first of all you are trying to emotionally changing channels changing emotional states of your brain you are deliberately doing that you could also do that by you know sound absurd sound absurd names and all that right and also i mentioned this sometime in the class right things are vulgar you tend to remember that better but uh, do we need to go to that shortcut not necessarily okay at least uh, for the class i am not going to do that okay personally i might do that but for the class professionally i would stay away from vulgar phonics okay but the, okay you need there is a lot of imagination prior knowledge visualization notice most of this actually visualization there is coding decoding you are doing compression whether communications is there in your syllabus or not it's there in ec syllabus biomedical a hey, only analog digital electronics but you are doing coding and coding somehow you need to code that information short you know short and notation in a decodable way right and closely associated with this emotional arousal you know preparing the mnemonics itself can be time consuming and it can come in the way of get preparation it can get impractical right so all of these details matter but things can get impractical so this is a very genuine question how do we come up with mnemonics as a teacher i can share as many mnemonics as possible even the cumulative list of mnemonics but needs to be personal it needs to be you know you should tweak it and kind of register it right and you also don't have a lot of uh, time to spend on training and all that okay now so practicality right practical time constraints right hey you can train for a train for two weeks memory course you are done right no 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 but i am in the middle of pay, you know uh, affording two weeks right now it's very hard for me right time constraints so one of the solutions is what to do in a particular where the page number paragraph number is in memory but the content is tied or faded yeah i have again we have known of dot anecdotes where students professors remember you tell a concept you tell a sentence they will tell the page number paragraph number now student is raising what to do in a particular situation where the page number paragraph number is in memory but the content is kind of faded away okay this is a peculiar situation in fact uh, i heard uh, sir yc fung had a photographic memory in this uh, days pre latex pre word uh, days how do you keep track of so many equations in your book i just remember them which equation number i kind of remember which chapter which equation number i kind of remember that's it right so that is some kind of you know god level memory but uh, the situation is hey why would anyone remember yeah okay so remembering equation number note is once upon a time was very useful before you had latex or before you had a uh, word even if you are writing a book that actually it's very useful right page number but these days why would anyone want to remember page number paragraph number i wouldn't even remember it so quick solution just strike off the page number paragraph number that's a distracting information so all the highlights that you might have i bought highlights so highlights don't work what do i do with the highlights you know here is the page number paragraph number you know if that is a real problem okay but getting back to this say this is a genuine problem and uh, this, there are also simple solutions let me show you how to make this mnemonics okay see first of all we are living in a time where most of the recall information it's there right we have got evolved to a place where we can kind of offload memory from our brain and put it to different use right that memory can be there in a pen you know in a paper in a notebook in a pen drive in a wikipedia page in a cloud right in a dna crystal whatever it is not not in a body outside of the we have our technology is advanced so far but unfortunately for right, there is a competitive exam some basic recall is needed right so there is also technology to help you with memory okay so i'm going to show an example of chat gpt use you don't you know initially i said hey actually you can use chat gpt to learn right i'm going to show example of uh, using chat gpt to memorize or come up with mnemonics not memorize okay and if possible personalize a mnemonic it's going to be spit out probable garbage then you can like sculpt it and then paint it here and there you know tinkering here and there and then kind of come up your uh, nice mnemonic okay let's look at simple example okay chat gpt let me just sign in yeah again this is chat gpt impromptu chat gpt i don't know how well it works so let's try perhaps 
one or two topics okay start now hope it works without signing in at gpt.com i hope yeah i think it works without logging in let's ask it okay can you suggest me just to remember rural aussie questions let's kind of let's not be very specific hey, help me remember uh, this alpha beta gamma delta and all that theta and all that neural oscillations can you help me remember that let's ask it let's see what it does okay point is we get this ability to fine tune this so one thing if you are using chat gpt of course preferably you need to verify that or you need to have a reliable uh, thing that you want to memorize and then come to chat gpt right for example this is generated so there is a good possibility that there is a mistake here because it might make a mistake here and there which then in which case you can you know correct it okay delta theta alpha beta gamma picture a deep dark ocean associating with deep sleep oh this is no notice okay this is why i also like impromptu things right okay delta is function is associated with something and then theta associated with some function and all that notice it's actually trying to help you memorize that functionality delta picture a deep dark ocean d d d d delta right ocean with a deep sleep i suppose delta wave associated with deep sleep deep dark ocean you are sleeping inside a deep dark ocean whether we should put a snake under our self different question perhaps attention associate it might interfere with some of the other frequencies here okay just we are sleeping inside deep dark ocean delta for deep dark right sleep theta imagine a twilight or dreamy landscape associated with light sleep relaxation theta twilight make it dreamy not okay not dreamy dreamy landscape light sleep or relaxation okay theta is dreamy not dreamy light sleep that kind of fairly i could associate it with alpha think of a calm sunny afternoon associated with relaxed wakefulness at this stage notice the mnemonic is not good at least delta d sound i associated with deep sleep deep d d d deep dark del deep but okay but how do we associate alpha with uh, alpha is a symbol right how do you associate with think of calm sunny afternoon i can see i can give wings to alpha make it fly and all that right calm sunny afternoon but um, this can be improved it is right now it is helping you with visualization testing you color codes but let's make it uh, make a flash card with the name of oscillation on one side no 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 let's fine tune this okay so what i want to rather do is ask you know be very specific i am finding it difficult to associate i am finding it difficult to associate alpha with twilight or dreamy landscape that is a twilight dreamy landscape is easy but how do we associate this alpha symbol with that alpha word or symbol with that right let's see how it un- understands right now let's say let's pretend this is a genuine concern okay alpha with twilight or dreamy landscape most intuitive so now it's kind of elaborating on alpha alpha associated relaxed alert state so let's try a different approach alpha is in optimal visualize calm water okay this is now giving me different things okay but let's also ask this hey, i also need to remember associated frequency range okay it kind of improved its response now okay think of d for deep t for twilight right twilight transition theta a for awake alpha b for busy notice okay in the process it kind of it's giving me better things it also giving the ranges now now the question is how do we remember the ranges i already gave you actually a simple thing right take 3.5 keep on doubling that but okay it's kind of giving this oh, here it's almost like putting 4 and adding 4 right 4 4 4 4 right then of course the pattern gets lost in beta so you can probe my point is to not to get the best mnemonic here use technology to create a mnemonic if you are struggling with that and in the process you can also personalize that and all that be careful about the details here so you need to have uh, information verifiable information outside of chat gpt if you are doing this okay that's important but you know quickly for example okay in fact uh, because i promised this last time notice hey help me remember this is of a this is the last example okay gate cycle and space swing phase okay initial loading mid stance terminal swing this on all that mnemonics and ilm dp you know this is not good like my tea pot okay say something like i like my tea plant for gate 
Yeah, I like my tea perfectly steeped. Swing face. This is for the stance face. Make tea. Okay, something like he like my tea perfectly steeped. So initial contact, loading response, mid stance, terminal uh, stance, pre swing. Okay, we roughly know most of this from you know we can run this in your mind and you know take a foot and make it walk, right? Most of it you know at least. Okay, here we kind of at least this is a simple mnemonic to remember the first letters. Let's not stand here. I mean, let's not stop here. I like my tea perfectly steeped. Make tea. Initial swing, mid swing, terminal swing. Can you make it absurd? The output of this is not just the mnemonic. I'm going to put that in a flashcard, which I'm going to actively recall. Else again, the point is lost. Okay. So a bit of absurd, more memorable. Imagine monkeys throwing, you know, um, both, uh, you know, both this uh, stance and face. Absurd mnemonic for both stance and swing face in lazy mornings terrifying pen going swing okay at this stage it's asking me to log in okay but i hope the point is clear discuss three examples okay eeg brain waves that we already had a nice mnemonic for i get some at least you know you can use chat gpt like a walking stick specifically if your question is sir but how do i come up with this mnemonic right if that is the case you can use technology as a walking stick you can fine tune it personalize it output is a flash card that you can use for active recall, exercising active recall. Okay, so let me stop here. Let's get back to that. At this stage, I think I need to show you some of the mnemonics that uh, my Anki deck, right? That is specifically useful for Kate. So let's look at look at a deck, okay? Study Anki web. Bioinst, hexaxial reference system. Lead 1, 2, 3, starting at 0, 60, 120. Then we have AVL, AVF, I mean AVL, AVR, AVL. Right, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, vertically down. Let one, two, three. Okay. Zero, 60, 120. Then we have AVL, AVR, AV, AVF. At 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 90 degrees. If you remember this, give me a cardiac axis, I can pro project it into this is a simple trigonometry to get the amplitude in any of the other directions. I know that much. That's a conceptual clarity that I have. I know what this exactual reference system and all that. The key detail is, hey, there's somehow this angle. In fact, it so happens that in gate, they give you this exactual reference system. Let's say they don't give it. Even in that case, you can quickly recall and do this. It's a typical question that they ask, which is also one reason that I have put up that I'm going to actively recall. Okay. Again, hard, good, easy. So we, what is it? Where should we put this? bio -inched PCG. What do you think is in the back of the card? PCG, phonocardiogram. We quickly, you know, give examples that are outside of biomedical or get into topics outside of this. Bio, get biomedical deck in a few minutes, but, uh, you know, right now, biomed students. Instrumentation, PCG. What is that important thing that you want to remember? One here, APTM. APTM, 2 to 4, 5. Iota, pulmonary, tricuspid mitral. Second right intercostal, second left intercostal, fourth left intercostal, fifth left right. Okay, I have a lot more information here, but notice that crux was that right. What corresponds, which location corresponds to typical aortic sound, at least like conventionally accepted aortic sound, right? You know that APTM and this 2245. 2245, of course, you also need to know the intercostal space. Stage probably noticed, the, yeah, some of you had this, right? Not the entire paragraph, but only key details. You know, the deck that I have made works for me. You may have to slightly modify it this way, that way, add details, remove details, sculpt it or paint it. Sculpting, you're removing details. Painting, you're adding details, right? You will have to, you may have to do both and make it suit, okay? And you will have to create that number. Okay, so this is good. bio and ECG lates, a number of electrodes, I suppose, right? You have uh, three, four, and five, right? First, lead one requires three, then most others requires four. Precordial requires five electrodes. And roughly, I also know, uh, you know, let two is a combination of one and two. Summation of all three AVR is augmented as zero. And I also know that augmented is 50% uh, higher compared to normal, you know, gold, uh, Goldberg is 50% better compared to that uh, other leads, right? Yeah, this, this is also augmented. RA minus uh, Winston's uh, terminal, right? This, is, it, this used to be the augmented. Then Goldberger said, hey, no, no. Don't uh, subtract the same Winston's terminal from all of the three LEDs, okay? Subtract a different combination from RA, different combination from LA, different combination from LL to get 
the current AVR, AVL, AVF. Why do that? This is what they used to do. This is what they do right now after Goldberger. In the process, notice original got multiplied by 3 by 2. Their signal kind of increased by 50%, right? You could see that. So, and also, you know, some of the other things that I noticed. Okay, ECG things, this is one of the important things that I want to remember. And also, once I have that, perhaps uh, I will have one or two other flashcards where I kind of re have the other uh, details that I mentioned. Biomic, flexion extension. What is flexion? Uh, what is flexion? What is extension? Right? Slightly tricky because it's a relative angle between proximal and distal uh, parts of the joint. And the proximal and distal part can be slightly tricky for some of the joints, like that in the neck, right? I have the definition, okay, decrease the angle, flexion is decrease in angle between proximal and distal, extension is the other way around. Yeah, here yeah, the neck, the proximal distal part is slightly different. That is a key detail prone to mistake. So I have that one detail here. Notice. I didn't even spend a lot of time making this mnemonic. I have screenshots from my notes because at the end of the day, I know what I want to recall, what is important there, right? What is difficult to recall or something like that. Most of this is straightforward. Hey, extension here is straightforward. At the knee is straightforward. At the hip is straightforward because proximal distal is straightforward. But at the neck, proximal distal, proximal is the head and the distal is the torso, right? Or the distal is this hand, forearm. That bit is slightly tricky, so I have put that piece of information here. Already had a discussion. What do we put in here? EEG brainwaves, D tab G, this number. If I have trouble creating this, I'll perhaps I would I would get help from chat GPT. And it, it didn't take me a lo long time to actually make this flashcard. One digital screenshot. I didn't even write it. Okay. Uh, directly from class notes. Another thing is you know you can anywhere you are in a you're on a bus, you're on a train, right? You can quickly save minutes. Do active recall and you know spend time in your preparation. Okay, one more figure like this hex axial. Yeah, okay, there are precordial you notes. Know, the same information 0, 60, 30, right? Lead electrodes. Yeah, 1, 3, dash 4, precordial 5. Yeah, first thing is 3, lead 1. Rest of them is, I know, is 4 electrodes. And then perhaps at the precordial, we need all 5 because it uses Wilson's terminal, right? 8. I like my T, please, in my T pod. Yes, Ramonica, I gave it in the class. And then you could also try to guess depending on where the difficulty is what you tend to forget you can try to recall that piece of information or make a separate count for that particular detail okay i'll leave that up to you why you say aptm 2245 what is this yeah heart murmur location aptm 2245 in the pcg i know okay notice i have put a flash count for the mnemonic aptm 2245 sometimes we tend to forget this right aptm because i didn't encode or i didn't absurdly uh record it aptm right pt master 2245, right? So, you know, I didn't absolutely really register it. For that reason, I have specifically made a flash cut for that. APTM 2245. Hey, what is this APTM 2245? Hey, yeah, aortic pulmonary tricuspid mitral and then 2245. Because I failed to put a, uh, let's say, I was constrained by time or whatever it is. APTM, don't underestimate the difficulty of remembering APTM. We, we pulled out the first letters in that order, but can likely happen that we might forget that aptm right for that reason i have put a flashcard here aptm 224a what is it yeah okay i can now i can quickly i can make it a two-way flashcard so looking at this i can try to guess what the mnemonic is or you know looking at the mnemonic guess what this is so two-way flashcards again you know this is possible boy and signal ranges hey one more thing hey details here right you can put information that you are trying to record okay profit margin profit percentage there is this aptitude question where i tend to make a mistake because there is a subtle difference, right? I know that. I I kind of came across this, noticed it during learning preparation sometime during. So I'll make a flashcard for that. Profit percentage is profit over cost price. Profit margin is profit over selling price, right? At this point, how you make your flashcard should be better compared to how you, you know, the beginning of this discussion, how you make your, whether you're making your flashcards or not, but right now your ability to make a flashcard could be better more targeted, more personalized, and all that. Okay, we can, you know, there are a few attitude sequence. This is what I'm going to do. In fact, the day before, I have scheduled a notice based repetition of aptitude tests, right? What I would do just before the exam or day before the exam, I'm going to, in fact, at least look at the flashcards. If I have trouble with the flashcards, I will go back to the notes, right? So, again, in the aptitude, there is this one important thing, right? There are so many things, but this is one thing that I can quickly try to recall. Whatever is relevant for you, okay? Make a flashcard on that.
flexion extension so with plantar dorsi hey that's also a tricky part is this, is this plantar is this dorsi right dorsi for decrease with a small mnemonic i have put hey dorsi is decrease in this angle plantar is increase in that angle yeah bio and cc let's this is right yeah two is one plus three and some of these is zero i spent about 10 minutes 10 flash cards right can tailor this okay let's stop with this flash cards right now yeah. one of the things that i am getting is so uh, i mean i just put this poll will it will make better flash cards starting now yes four voted for you know those who voted they are saying yes okay okay that is good to know but we scheduled it till 8 30 okay novelty doesn't end here again there are practical issues and realistic scenarios okay anki creative notice hey just because someone you know gives you a tool uh, uh, that's not the only way you know uh, the way it is described in the manual or something like that is not the only way you can use a tool you can get creative out of the box okay uh, make in mnemonic flashcards uh, efficient significant flashcards right be smart about making flashcards you can use technology to use this and all that plan so far is yeah mnemonics familiarity with association active recall and saving times at a minute this boils down to using flashcards what are software used i don't uh, mind okay and then uh, stronger emotions matter absurd connections matter distraction stories and interleaving so there is promoter technique and all that uh you know there is you change topic at a fixed time and all at least during teaching notice the number of times i am decreasing reason to talk about professor yc Fung, his ability to memorize right that's a digression that's essentially what i am doing is an interleaving reason to talk about my dog pet or whatever it is any of the things that i do in a lecture or actually uh, engineered or deliberate okay because that is known to actually uh, improve your learning your conceptual understanding and your ability to recall and also you know eventually apply that so many of the things jokes it's actually intended to it's higher good teachers can do this right you also need to pass right two and a half hours yeah we all have the stamina but you know two and a half hours of concentration that two after uh, three hours of class in the afternoon right but there is an art of teaching there is also an art of learning okay so we can be uh, we can be deliberate and smart not let second law take over let this exponential decay take over our intelligence imagination that can intervene and push things improve things can make things go the other way around, far away from equilibrium right give life to things right fine flashcards for things actually yeah distraction stories interleaving all of these things are known to now i specified this sir how do we come up with mnemonics use technology then there is this genuine question but i may not be motivated to active recall actively recall practice prepare at the first place who said uh, i have that much motivation discipline to make that flash card your sir you spent two hours thinking i'll go make that flash card will i start making better flash card because any flash card that i make is better number is zero right uh previous number so but i may not be motivated to actively recall to spend time do this works I'll also try to address this, okay? With that, kind of we'll finish. We'll kind of finish at scheduled time. Hey, so uh, let me summarize the things that really matter. Same day review, immediate review. In fact, if you try to test it before the examination, right? Before learning a subject, you take a small short test. Hey, how, how do they relate uh, sound to location of vulvar defect? Something like that, right? Some of this curio, you, you get curious about the subject. That kind of improves the way you learn okay immediate testing in fact uh, pre-testing that is known to have an effect uh, same day review as soon as the class gets over you need to review that right now i'm not doing active recall but at this end of this i'll at least uh, make you do that okay i'll quickly spend some time on that i spend you know some of the stories distractions interleaving and all that are engineered it also turns out students feel, feel you know there is always this uh, dropout right during a lecture the attendance you know there is this capacitor charging it's like initially 63 percent then like only this much is kind of saturating right exponential decay is there in the class attendance also turns out feeling in the class is not necessarily conducive to learning rather attention thought and effect you're kind of getting tired with the amount of information and the your stamina is getting tested because of the lecture material and your active participation on that you are thinking along with the teacher reason i keep asking questions again and again and again keep bothering you this doesn't give you a good feeling it's hard learning is hard 
but it turns out attention is actually take some effort to put attention put some effort take some effort to put thought and that effort you put is what actually determines how much you learn initially right that initial amplitude so you're not feeling good you know feeling kind of feeling tired during a class probably both you and the teacher is doing a good job your stamina are getting tested you are learning yeah you are feeling good eh hey, so nice nice total full jokes interleaving right or feeling confident i am reading everything in the slide right i'm feeling very confident that seems to be actually not show up in the performance okay so if you are getting tired which typically happens and i have a signature or i have a proxy for this proxy measure for this attendance dropout during lecture you are getting tired okay that is understandable fine because this thought this process right being active and participative and thoughtful in the class actually one of the things that really affects your learning okay we are of that okay flip blended learning this way give you recorded videos right if you come prepared for this we can actually make the class time more efficient right uh, notice that is there in the thing then peer teaching feynman technique some of you mentioned then let's finish this with this bit all these things matter the thing that most matters is active recall works but does a student uh, has the discipline motivation to do active recall student interested and motivated deliberate practice works but it's painful will the student do deliberate practice attention is you know the class is very thoughtful right but can i put that effort to stick to the class at least till get gets over right this seems to be the actual actual that differentiates success career in competitive exams from failure intrinsic motivation passion flow this right full deliberate practice your ability to manage yourself that is partly you no know, discipline and time management right genuinely actually students have an issue there but that also needs to be addressed okay i'm going to suggest some means towards this okay so if i don't say this active recall works but at the end of the day why should i do active recall how can i force myself doing active recall if that doesn't work right all the discussion that we had can you know go to garbage or need not be put up in youtube see actually you know, uh, i put up a youtube video i get like 100 views i'm very very happy about it while some person like having 1 lakh views might be feeling sad i missed a million views right but the reason sometimes i feel happy about 100 views is that i know at least perhaps one or two students got benefited by that right that intrinsic motivation always makes me actually look for useful information to share to teach not necessarily repetitions or clickbaits or any of that okay so yeah it's something that is takes effort to learn right if a video takes effort to watch actually there is something probably uh, useful for you okay so having said that i will end this with some tips on improving your intrinsic motivation deliberate practice time management some tips not exhaustive some tips that can work okay for most of you janami dharma na so so i don't know sanskrit or hindi and all that you know i don't know it properly i, I learned it like in sc- uh, school days then i forget hindi I didn't learn Sanskrit, so this like uh, does any of you know Hindi? What, what is being stated here? At least I know what is being stated here. Papam na cha me nivrtha keno pi devane. Say I don't know Hindi, but I'm I kind of like partly know, right? So what do you think is stated here? So I'm interleaving disclaimer. I mean not disclaimer. Yeah, spoiler alert. Does anyone recognize? Uh, roughly translate, paraphrase what is being stated? Well, wait for that notice. I give you know flash cons is actually you are saving minutes at a time. over a span of a day you are saving hours right so actually flash cons are a nice uh, time saving uh, time management trick okay done in the proper way so this is actually one of the questions in 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 mahabharata you know there is this kalki movie and all that this is for you know you know i am not taking a religious side or preaching a religion this is what is there in this epic mahabharata okay that that our culture our country knows right so one of the questions is guided arjuna right confused fearful anxious student from that state he made him he guided him in krishna guide duryodhana why is this partiality question has arisen okay to many people it also turns out the author of mahabharata addressed this question krishna also tried to help duryodhana you know what duryodhana said what was the do you know the difference between arjuna and duryodhana this is a statement made by duryodhana it actually means i am paraphrasing you know what is right i know what i am supposed to do i am not able to do it okay paraphrasing it something in my heart is not letting me do it 
something in my heart is controlling me to do something else that i don't want to do i am i seem to be not under my control right paraphrasing my animalistic instincts seems to be taking over my will power i don't have control over that i am not determined to do this so turns out now also try to help duryodhana but what the difference was duryodhana was was not determined to get help or he couldn't exercise his will this unique human capability again i'm not getting into whether there is free will or not you you decide to do something your prefrontal cortex right this decision making thing part of your brain wants to do something your limbic system reptilian system one of that is trying to do something else can you override that hierarchically this cortex has this supposed to have a higher authority supposed to overrule what is being decided at the bottom right again in in simple terms but the cortex decision making thing you know keeping will and all that aside does that take over the fault system default animalistic or limbic or reptilian system pons middle or blanket or even the hypothalamus thalamus thalamus region can the cortex region take over that it seems to be that that seems to be the big difference okay will power determinism and krishna couldn't help arjuna i mean if krishna couldn't help duryodhana right i no i don't claim to help uh, you know uh, help really help your interest motivation deliberate practice time management i cannot really like you know if you don't have the will power uh, you know uh, this, this is a hard problem but i can give you some tips okay out of genuine concern this is a genuine problem out of genuine concern i want to give you some tips for some reason okay you decided to take the competitive exam you are in a specific state hey, okay i'll give it but then change in mind interestingly memory plays a critical role i'll make this really short there was a time when we loved something we decided to started doing something then we seem to forget what, what we love right there were certainly joys of moments of joy you know moments of joy and satisfaction seem to forget that right sense of purpose it turns out if you are a student is very clear on how that exam or something like that will have a effect will take him from the current state to desirable state if the student is very clear on that that seems to have uh, effect on his intrinsic levels of motivation so sense of purpose notice you all most of you not most of you in fact all of you who applied for the gate exam had a sense of purpose but most of you forget that sense of purpose all of you had meanings and inspirations right but we don't seem to remember it when it is most needed this kalki movie is out karna forget how to use that astra at the most crucial moment he had practiced he had learned that skill from some of the best teachers at the most crucial moment he forget how how to use that astra right so memory partly is associated with sometimes you are in a good mood but right now right you know what happened you know where that i was motivated i don't know where that motivation went i was determined i was willful right i was interested i was deliberately practicing i was trying to manage my time i was trying to make this flash card i was practicing right somehow right now it seems to be missing it is not there in the picture it's not there in the memory right now i am not able to recall it uh, you know happens to different extent to different uh, you know different time lens different scenarios but notice my suggestion is again this is a hard problem but my suggestion is there are always good times you can do active recall of good times deliberate active recall of good times okay that is one suggestion that i want to finish this so what are some creative you know anki creative users making mnemonic flash cards is one thing of every 100 card i will put a inspirational card i know this is a driving force for me one card i will insert here and there okay to keep my vision and memory in check i will give you samples okay for example hey why am i doing this right it's a very hard thing right because when you look at it some problems can be solved in the inside some problems can be solved in the outside some problems can be only solved in the boundary there are problems like that there are genes uh, intracellular material then there is cell membrane then there is extracellular material and environmental cues right the boundary is also there right so not being in academia you know keep keep uh, my subject knowledge keep my teaching expertise all of that aside is not necessarily easy thing but i always feel okay uh, the boundary gives me opportunities and uh, you know abilities and you know create uh, solutions that are not otherwise possible right so i do have you know one or two you know uh, every now and then if my memory is weak 
I do go refer back to my vision. Sometimes it does work because you know I tend to forget things. Sometimes it does work. Some you know, for example, a heaven of freedom. Hey, is there a heaven of freedom on earth? Yes, where the mind is without fear, right, and the head is held high. We are anxious, right? Hey, but there is this. You are actively recalling what is this heaven of freedom, right? One out of hundred cons is not a bad thing. Okay, easy. It what happens that how many of you know that Mahatma Gandhi ji he wrote a book on health, guide to health. Do any of you know that he has actually written a book on health, healthcare? He has. Okay, I have written it. In fact, uh, it's a very interesting read. Okay, I don't want to critique it any further, but you know, it is one of the things is, hey, why I of all person should write it? Is there any justification for you know at all for one like me, who am no doctor, whose knowledge of the matters dealt with is in these pages must be necessarily imperfect. Attempting to write a book of this kind, some of you might be surprised. You wrote a book on health, right? You know, it is actually I found a very strong inspiration there. Okay, my expertise, my subject knowledge, you know, it, it, this is very different, of course, from biomedical healthcare, uh, uh, physiology, and all that, right? Um, engineering, physiology, physiological engineering, and all that. But he did it, right? I could uh, resonate with it. I have highlighted some bits here, but notice we have succeeded in, however feeble a measure, in bringing this grand fact to our reader, our objective, right? And the end of the day, you know, quickly paraphrasing, you need to, you need a good body, healthy, sound body. To to use it to realize its potential, whatever it is, right? This is coming from uh, Gandhi ji, so this is quite uh, okay. You need a sound body for that, so we need to take action towards that. And uh, in however feeble a measure, in fact, there are often he mentions even if at least one person actually benefits from this. Okay, my objective is met. Okay, uh, that is one of my inspirations. I do keep it right. Each soul is hey, what is this? Okay, body is each soul is potentially divine. Right. Again, I'm taking your national leaders. I'm not taking you know random ideologies. Okay. Mind is this. In fact, this is a very strong. We at least I tend to forget. Do this either by work or worship or psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of this or you know okay, whatever means. Typically, work, worship, psychic control, philosophy. Okay. One or more combination or all. Something that works for you. Okay. And do it. That's actually a very strong reminder for my memory of sorts, right? You can have things like this. You know, one in every hundred things that kind of at least uh, we tend to forget. The problem is there is bewilderment of memory, right? Again, if I have to paraphrase, there is anger. Anger is like your heart rate. Everything increases. There is clouding of judgment. Uh, your there is a processing power in the brain that is clouded. That is making mistakes. That gets error prone. And in the process, short-term, long-term memory is corrupted. There is bewilderment of memory. Okay? So memory has a role to play in motivation, and you can actually also use active recall to to address that. You can try that. Okay, one in hundred doesn't going to harm you. Okay, that would be my suggestion. And as cards to I don't know, it is actually a very difficult problem. Okay, at least one of you flashcard works right. Because hey, th these instances are always there. We have photographs of nice memories, right? Videos and all that. But uh, can we be, can we exploit what we know about active recall and can we keep our memory fresh and sharp, right? So that's a question. At least I leave that question to you. Whether you access it is uh, is up to you. Okay, we are close to schedule time. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll open it now. I'll do a quick summary of what we did. Recall what we did. Immediately test. Okay. See, you can use Anki in very, very creative ways. Normal flashcards is what most people think. You can use actually mnemonic flashcards. You can make it more efficient, smart. You can use technology to actually start uh, doing some of these flashcards also. You can get use it as a walking stick. Vision and positive thought flashcards every now and then, right? Uh, can also refresh some of the other aspects of memory, meta aspects of memory that you need for preparation, right? Your vision and positive thoughts. You can actually have a collection of that. One in hundred. Okay, this is known to work. Auto suggestion works in many cases. Positive thoughts, expectation bias. So many of these are known to work. Uh, positive things, you know, in moderation. Why not, right? You could also do exam subject question type flashcard. Hey, from this subject, what is a typical question that I ask? ECG, for example. You, you can have a make a flashcard of gate questions, right? Bio instrumentation PYQ, typical PYQ. I'll have this ECG question in the back of the card. That is one way for me to revise, right? So 
no one constrains you from using a flashcard this way. Active recall is extremely important, right? But you don't have to constrain yourself. You can get actually creative about this. And uh, the good way for me to you know complete this is to put an ellipsis. If there are in fact any suggestions that you suddenly thought any creative uses of Anki, okay, Anki or a flashcard, let me know. Recall things that matter because I am running short of time. To review immediate space testing, that is active recall is a key element. And you can bend the functionalities of a flashcard to address things, abilities outside of recall, apply synthesis and all that. For example, you know, unit conversion as a simple example I gave. I gave some other examples, right? Some of these with respect to teaching, perhaps you don't need to know. Peer teaching helps. So be participative in that group. Interest, you can also do something about interest motivation, you know, some of these aspects, okay? To actively recall positive things, things that uh, inspire you or give you a sense of purpose, or at least once upon a time gave you a sense of purpose, or the reason behind you actually designing to give gate exam, something like that, right? This is known to have, if you are clear on why gate exam, this is actually known to have an effect on your performance, okay? Again, this is the empirically studied, which is one reason I'm uh, Partly like, hey, is it causative, correlative? Of course, if someone is motivated, they are going to prepare well, they are going to perform well, right? But so this fact matters. Find means to stay hydrated, stay motivated, stay regenerated, okay? Here is a good place to stop, okay? So you can slow down the TK right? So notice the point of exercise and meditation are very different things. Exercise kinds of calms you down. Meditation improves your focus and memory. This, this has to do with your long-term decay rate, retention curve, right? How fast is it decaying? You can have actually control over there with things like meditation and all that. And uh, also know how to rest. So we'll have a physiological engineering discussion on sleep and rest, okay? So we'll do this in the future. For now, if there are any questions, comments, I already got the feedback, some of you are... Uh, going to use this better if there aren't any questions comments we'll wind up in a couple of minutes okay let me also stop the recording at this stage